Good afternoon. Our TMP topic is sex trafficking, and our question is, what is the most notable impact sex trafficking has in the 21st century? Okay, so the process of sex trafficking. The process is defined as a set of methods, actions, and means whose combined or single usage a person enters the net of sex trafficking. It is divided into three categories, emotional manipulation, financial desperation, and direct force. So, for emotional manipulation, the traffickers prey on the victim's needs and vulnerabilities, and they create a support system and dependency in their life. So the relationship is often masked as a consensual and affectionate one, but it actually turns into the trafficker making them um, sell their bodies or go into prostitution. Um, next, there is financial desperation. So for financial desperation, um, the traffickers um, prey on the need for money that the victims or the victims' families need, and they disguise themselves as agencies that uh, offer lucrative job opportunities or substantial job opportunities. And so they're trying to target the desperate and people who come from a low income background. And so then there are also families that are trapped in severe levels of poverty and debt who will sell their children into sex trafficking to gain money because um, of the law of debt or poverty and crisis. And then finally, there is direct force. So direct force is infrequent because um, taking victims across international borders is harder than having emotional uh, than emotionally manipulating them or them being in financial desperation. So um, the baby factories are the factories where uh, women are taken to have children that are later put into the sex trafficking tra trafficking industry and um, are forced to uh, serve as sex slaves during sexual exploitation. So. Um, Obviously, sex trafficking happens in multiple places in the world, so the U.S. Department of State releases a TIP, in which, or a Trafficking in Persons Report, in which each country is um, judged based on their efforts to combat modern-day slavery, and each country is placed into a tier, either Tier 1, 2, uh, the Tier 2 watch list, or Tier 3. Tier 1 essentially being the best tier, or and Tier 3 being the worst, because the government's there do not meet the minimum standards or do not make significant efforts to meet the minimum standards of the TVPA or the Trafficking Victims Protection Act. So countries such as Russia and China are placed in this tier three category. So Russia it has been a tier three country since 2010 and most of the victims of sex trafficking in Russia come from different countries um, in the areas of Southeast Asia, Central Asia, Africa, and all around Europe. And as I said before, the governments in these um, countries do not make significant efforts to combat, essentially, sex trafficking. So it's more of the local groups, like the local authorities, the, um, the women's groups, and non-government groups that make these efforts to combat sex trafficking. And in China, China was actually on the Tier 2 watch list for nine years before being demoted to a Tier 3 country. And it's because the Chinese define sex trafficking differently than the U.S. Department of State does. They define it as the abduction and trafficking of women and children through kidnapping, selling, and or um, uh, sending and receiving uh, women and children. And that's why uh, this margin has become such a hard way for the US Department of State to categorize them into a different tier. So, and as Russia, China also has many victims from outside of China to come in for sex trafficking, and it's mainly in the neighboring Asian countries like Laos, Vietnam, Malaysia, and also Russia, the Americas, and all around Europe. All right, so uh, as she talked to you guys about the geographical standpoint of sex trafficking, I'll be talking to you guys about the psychological standpoint of sex trafficking and their, their impact. So there are many notable impacts of um, uh, the psychological aspect of sex trafficking, but I'll talk to you guys about the most notable, which include depression, PTSD, and anxiety disorder. Let's look at PTSD. So PTSD is triggered by an event so traumatic, kind of like being trafficked sexually, and um, it disrupts one from their doing daily activities in their lives. And, and according to a study by the NCBI, the National Center for Biotechnology Information, they concluded that uh, PTSD is found most in the sexually exploited among trafficked, among the trafficked. And now, anxiety disorder. Anxiety disorder, according, uh, according, sorry, according to the 
uh, Anxiety and Depression Association of America, anxiety disorder is one of the most common worldwide mental illnesses. Anxiety disorder is a mood disorder in which one worries to the point that it disrupts their daily activities. According to an article entitled um, Medical, uh, sorry, um, um, me Mental Health Issues in the Sex, sex Trafficking Victims, Cogent Medicine, they concluded that out of the 176 uh, males and females that they surveyed, they concluded that 56% had uh, suffered from anxiety disorder. Here's the last one, which is depression. Depression is a mood disorder that um, is the persistent um, feeling of sadness and lack of interest. And depression is one of the most common amongst uh, the sexually trafficked. And also, uh, according to a peer-reviewed scientific journal entitled um, Social Sciences in Medicine, they concluded that when they surveyed uh, Nepalese women from various different backgrounds, in, from human trafficking to labor trafficking, trafficking they concluded that the ones with, uh, that were sexually exploited had the most uh, and suffered from depression. <coughs> so uh, the economic impact, um, so sex trafficking actually uh, affects the economy in two ways. It's through the vulnerability and victimization of individuals and also the high demand from uh, foreign investment. So the first one, the majority of victims who are being sex trafficked actually come from uh, low economic backgrounds and have little uh, and low economic opportunities. And they are kind of manipulated and exploited through the promises of shelter, food, care, and you know other basic necessities that kind of separate them from being uh, of the poor and the wealthy. And it kind of puts a strain on the economic class. Um, and also limits their ability to uh, break free of their traffickers. And the high demand from foreign in, uh, investment, sex trafficking, the basis of sex trafficking is uh, due to supply and demand. So because of the, uh, the very cheap upkeep uh, for traffickers to recruit these individuals and because of the little to no care or payment that the victims are receiving, it's very, very easy to make a profit and generate um, generate profit from these cities and from these countries. So uh, these cities and countries are experiencing a tremendous gain from the sex trafficking industry. And so for our team solution and argument, so all the impacts discussed in our presentation, the economic aspect was the most notable one. And we believe this to be true because the economic impact has created such a large market for sex trafficking and it's due to the traffickers gaining so much profit from actually trafficking people. Uh, so one of the limitations that we encountered is that every country has uh, different economic advantages and disadvantages, and it's really hard to generalize whether uh, their impact is uh, globally economic. And it is also actually very hard to kind of state where uh, each place or each city and country has the largest pool of sex, tra of sex trafficking because each place ranges so drastically. Our sources for each. All right, so let me ask you guys a couple of questions. Um, most of the questions. So, how did the content of the team presentation change as a result of some group discussions here? So, we kind of originally we talked and we kind of wanted to do a more physical aspect and more judicial aspect um, where it's strict criminal uh, kind of laws and kind of the sentences that goes on, but upon further look and further examination of our um, kind of topic and what will kind of benefit our argument, we kind of picked uh, the process of sex trafficking and what kind of economic and kind of like facts rather than kind of the emotional side a little bit. Okay. Um, if, can, so Ted, can you give me one specific way that you're thinking changed as a result of reading Victoria's findings in our... Um, so for the geographical aspect, I had never like read about the sex trafficking in, uh, on a global aspect, so I never um, really encountered like how the tiers worked and how um, if you're on tier three, that the 
uh, government didn't supply like any aid to sex trafficking victims. And this helped me understand a further like Christian of how this actually affects multiple countries and that they're in need for money to give to the sex trafficking victims. Um, what was an example of a, com a compelling argument from one of your peers that you decided to exclude from the team presentation? Well, um, as Hannah said before, um, we had the argument of the judicial aspect of sex trafficking, but we excluded it from uh, Penny's findings. Okay. Um, what was the strongest counter argument to the solution or your conclusion your team identified and why? I think it would be that it's very hard to identify on a global aspect um, how the, eco the economy really affects the world and because as Hannah researched she said it was very hard to like find different ways to identify this so I think that'd be the end best counter argument I guess. Okay. Thank you guys again.